In this video we look at the integration work required by the FP3 module. The specification lists the functions that we are expected to be able to integrate and emphasizes the fact that the method to be used will not always be given in the question, although in fact it frequently is. So first of all, there's a really useful page 6 in the formula booklet with lots of standard integrals. Make sure you know the existence of this page and use it. Where a method is not used, the following sort of guidelines are quite useful. So if one's got 1 over ax squared plus bx plus c to integrate, complete the square and then it ought to turn into a standard integral. Similarly if you've got 1 over the square root of ax squared plus bx plus c, completing the square on the quadratic will turn it into a format where a simple substitution ought to turn it into a standard integral. If one has the integral of the square root of ax squared plus bx plus c, again start by completing the square and then depending on the format of what you end up with, you will either use a substitution using a hyperbolic function or a substitution using a trig function. Most of the time though, fortunately, you are actually told which method to use, so a big hint will be given to you in the exam question. Integrals like e to the ax cos bx or e to the ax sine bx need to be handled by using integration by parts twice. In those cases it appears as if you're going around in a circle, in fact what you're obtaining is an equation which can be solved to find the integral. For integrals like 1 over a plus b cos x or 1 over a plus b sin x or 1 over a plus b cos x plus c sin x, the t equals tan half x substitution that you met in FP2 is very useful and we will see that in the first example that we are going to consider which comes from the 2012 paper So, we've been told to use t equals tan half x as a substitution. The formula booklet tells us that that means that cos x is 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. If t is tan half x, then we can rewrite that as x equals 2 tan to the minus 1 of t. So, dx by dt is 2 over 1 plus t squared. So, we can write replace dx by 2 over 1 plus t squared dt. So we can now start doing the integration. We've got the integral between 0 and pi by 2 of 1 over 4 cos x plus 3 dx. So that's the same thing as the integral. Well, first of all, the 1 over 4 cos x plus 3 becomes 1 over 4 lots of 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared plus 3. And the dx becomes 2 over 1 plus t squared dt. We've got to have a think about the limits. Now when x is naught, then we've got t is tan half of 0, which is 0. When x is pi by 2, t is tan of a half of x, so that's tan of pi by 4, which is 1. Now we've got a rather monstrous expression here, but this can be very simply simplified by just multiplying the tops and multiplying the bottoms of the two fractions. So we end up with 2 on the top, and then we've got 4 lots of 1 minus t squared plus 3 lots of 1 plus t squared. Which simplifies again to 2 over 7 minus t squared to be integrated.
Now, so we've now got the integral of 2 over 7 minus t squared. Now the formula booklet tells us that the integral of 1 over a squared minus x squared is 1 over 2a natural logarithm of the absolute value of a plus x over a minus x. Now we've got precisely this, this except the top has been multiplied by 2 and we've got a is root 7. So we are able to write down that the integral of 2 over 7 minus t squared is going to be 2 over 2 root 7 times the natural logarithm of root 7 plus x over root 7 minus x. Got the limits of 0 and 1. So if we insert the limits, we obtain that. And the value, correct to three significant figures, is 0 0.301. So the marking for this, well we've got two marks for doing the carrying the substitution out, and another two marks then for basically simplifying it down to reaching the point where we know that the original integral is equal to 2 over 7 minus t squared. We've then got a mark for making use of the standard integral and then two marks for evaluating the integral correctly. Moving on to a second example coming from the 2010 paper, we have to use the substitution x equals shine u to evaluate the integral between 0 and 3 of x squared over the square root of x squared plus 1. So let's start off with the substitution details. So we've got x is, x is shine u, tells me that dx by du is cos u, so dx can be replaced by cos u du. So the integral between 0 and 3 of x squared over the root of x squared plus 1, well the x squared becomes shine squared u, and the x squared plus 1 becomes shine squared u plus 1. The dx becomes cos u du. Need to have a think about the limits. If x is 0, then that means I've got shine u equals 0, so u must be 0. On the other hand, if x is 3, then I've got shine u equals 3, so x must be, sorry, u must be shine to the minus 1 of 3. Now we know that cos squared x minus shine squared x is always equal to 1. So cos squared x is the same thing as 1 plus shine squared x. In other words, shine squared u plus 1 is going to be the same thing as cos squared u. Square root of cos squared u is definitely cos u, because cos u is always a positive number. So we've got cos u on the bottom, we've got cos u on the top, and they're going to cancel each other out. So what we're left with is the integral between naught and shine to the minus 1 of 3 of shine squared u. Now there are two or three different ways of handling this integral of shine squared u. One would be to go back to the definition of shine u, which is e to the u minus e to the minus u over 2, and that is all squared. Of course we've got shine squared u. Multiplying it out gives me e to the 2u, take away 2, plus e to the minus 2u, all over 4 or a half of e to the 2u plus e to the minus 2u over 2, take away 1. So that is a half of shine, so cosh 2u, take away a half. So we can replace the integral of shine squared u by the integral 
of a half cosh 2u minus a half, which we can now integrate to obtain a quarter shine 2u minus a half u. And we've got limits still there of naught and shine to the minus 1 of 3. And when we do the arithmetic on that, we end up with 3.83. The mark scheme for this question, well the first four marks were for moving from the original integral down to the shine squared u integral. Then there were another two marks then for handling the integral of shine squared u and coming down to the quarter shine 2u take away a half u. And then finally an answer mark for obtaining the correct value at the end of the question. And we have one further example to look at. And this one comes from the 2008 paper. And we've got to use the substitution x equals 1 plus shine theta to evaluate the integral of the root of x squared minus 2x plus 2, where x goes from 1 to 2. It's quite convenient if you simply complete the square on the quadratic expression. So x squared minus 2x plus 2 is the same thing as x minus 1 squared add 1. So what's the substitution? Well, we've got x equals 1 plus shine theta. So that means that x minus 1 squared add 1 is shine squared theta plus 1. But we know that shine squared theta plus 1 is the same thing as cosh squared theta. We've got x equals 1 plus shine theta, so dx by d theta is cosh theta, so we have got dx is cosh theta d theta. So the integral that we've got, x squared minus 2x plus 2 becomes cosh squared theta. And that's got to be square rooted. dx becomes cosh theta d theta. And we need to have a quick think about the limits. If x is 1, then we've got 1 equals 1 plus shine theta. So that means shine theta must be equal to 0, which means theta must be naught. On the other hand, for the top limit, we've got 2 equals 1 plus shine theta, which means that I've got 1 equals shine theta, which means that the theta must be shine to the minus 1 of 1. The square root of cosh squared theta is cosh theta, because cosh theta is always positive. So what we've now got is we've got the integral between naught and shine to the minus 1 of 1 of cosh theta times cosh theta. In other words, we've got the integral between naught and shine to the minus 1 of 1 of cosh squared theta d theta. Now again, to, there's several different ways of handling the integral of cosh squared theta, but we'll do something very similar to what we did in the previous example. We can say that cosh squared theta is e to the theta plus e to the minus theta over 2 all squared. That's e to the 2 theta plus 2 plus e to the minus 2 theta all over 4. So that's a half of e to the 2 theta plus e to the minus 2 theta over 2, which of course is just cosh 2 theta add 1. So we've got a half cosh 2 theta plus a half of 1. So that's a half cosh 2 theta plus a half. So we've now got our integral. It's the same thing as the integral between naught and shine to the minus 1 of 1 of a half cosh 2 theta plus a half d theta. Half cosh 2 theta integrates to a quarter shine 2 theta and a half integrates to a half theta and insert the limits we end up with 1.15 as our final answer and in this example there were f 
five um, four marks for moving from the original integral to the integral of cos squared theta then a further two marks for moving down to the integral here and then final two marks for obtaining the answer at the end of the question.